Was she a little lost? You made it though? Hey, late entrance food, then it's hot. Let's go. Where'd you go? Is there a difference? No comment, by the way. There's no difference. There's no difference. Is, 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 there a difference? is there a difference between coming home at 2 in the morning and 5 in the morning? You're still gonna get your ass beat, bro, by your girl. <laughs> That's just fact. You're gonna get regarded your ass chewed. That's the difference, right? What? Is it? Wait, what? <laughs> regardless, you're gonna get chewed. Is that the point of the But it's a worse chew than if you're not home at 2. You're, you're getting home late. When you get home at 5, you're gonna get home. It's a new you day. You still, you still <laughs> show up the next day. <laughs> it's a new That's day. But it's like it's like me. Okay, it's, it's two. I I see it. It's two. I'm like, fuck. Wow, I'm already late. So why not be later? You know, like, you fuck, like keep going. Right <laughs> I just think like the same argument you're gonna have at two. No, you have it at five. No, it's different. But I, okay, like, tell me why. Tell me why. Hey, I thought you were an outside fool. <laughs> So I'm like, okay, he left at one ish. By the time he got home, it's two. Okay, cool. I don't say anything. He got home at five. It's like, bro, the freaking bar's up. Hey, there's only one blame right to blame. You can only blame me. I'm sorry. I want to be out. Technically, <laughs> that taco's still open and Alfredo is still open. So you know why well, they're out there eating. <laughs> they're out there eating. Hey, so tell me. The this is the intro to the intro, everybody. Taking a toast, real quick. Toast to life. Toast to life. There it is. Cheers. Cheers. Whoever, Cheers. Whoever blacks out is not our fault. Yeah, <sighs> grab your cafecito. Grab your drink. <laughs> hold on tight because we have finally on this podcast on a short notice and after a long walk. <laughs> <laughs> we got Cynthia in the house, baby. Let's go. <laughs> How was your walk? Sweaty. <laughs> Did you do cardio today? Did you work out? No, that was my cardio. That was the cardio. There we go. So oh. I want to introduce, like, a mom, a personal trainer, business owner, and living life. There you go. <laughs> there we go, right? It, I'm try we're trying to fit in all the areas. And the first one, I do want to start just because for the first time, Brittany is in L.A. with us. Thank you. Oh, for second time. There, yeah, but finally back, yes, giving out to the, to the founder of the podcast because she bought the first camera. So, Brittany, thank you. Yes. Got to give her the light. She did the flowers. So, first one, because it, I'm very curious. She is very curious. And I think a lot of the people that are going to listen in are curious, too. How do you balance parenting, business, and your personal life? Okay, so don't hate me. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Before I say anything, um, I do have a particular way of thinking. And when it comes to balance, for me personally, I take that out of my vocabulary. There, For me, there is no balance as far as, like, depending on what part of your life you're in right now so like the season of your life right so like is this my grinding season is this my like focus on my family season is this my work season like yes of course everything matters all the time but like I think when it comes to like my priority I have to remember what season I am right now so um I do bodybuilding so like right. there's on seasons for that off season so when I'm on it's not that I'm like, bye kid, you know, like my kid is number one, but I do have to remember that I have things to do to be a better mom. I have to do those things for myself first. Like, yeah. it's not selfish. I don't see it that way. I think like if I didn't do those things for myself, then I probably wouldn't be that hands on of a mom when it was mom time. It's uh, knowing like I need to get this done first, then I could be 100 yeah. percent, you know, with my son or for instance, um, Right now, it's off-season for me, so, like, I'm doing the most with my son. Like, he's my number one right now, you know? And, of course, I go to the gym, but first is my son right now. So that's what I mean by balance is that, like, I need to know what season I'm in right now to decide my list. So you have seasons through kind of, like, balance your life. Just, like, life seasons, yeah. Like, what is life throwing at me right now? Like, what is most important? And then I go based off of that, off of the things that are my every every. Every day, it's the same thing. So, so how'd you come with this thinking, though? Um, I don't I, think I don't think no. Like when we have kids or anything, like anybody listen, listening to this that has kids, like 
we're all trying to find a certain balance. I know we are. Yeah. Um, other people that we, we are friends with and people that are looking to be parents. The biggest thing for us and when we started was when you become parents, I heard it before, you have to give up. Yeah, sacrifice, No matter what, right? you got to sacrifice. Mm -hmm. And one thing we did, like, have to understand, and I had to understand, I was like, yo, like, if I give up and I sacrifice, like, what am I teaching him already? You're giving up on them. That's how you feel. Yeah, like, I'm giving up <laughs> on my dream. That means I can't tell you to go follow your dream because that means I'm being a hypocrite. Yeah. I don't want to be a hypocrite. I want you to learn from how I'm doing it so you can, whatever you're going to do, whether it's if it's in social media, whether it's business with my dad and his grandpa, whatever it is, I want you to be happy. I think that mindset's correct. So, like, you're, you're thinking about your dreams, your goals to Excellent. further them, but you have to give time for that, right? Yeah. So, like, um, that's what I mean. It's kind of like, what's your dream? Like, what season are you in? Let's say, like, right now you're trying to grow your business or your podcast or whatever, and it's like, I need to put that somewhere on the top. You know what I mean? Like, yes, I have these priorities for being a parent, and it's like, um, like I said, how do you show up to be 100% a parent if you're not showing up for yourself 100% first? It's not mm. selfish. It's just something that you have to do to be all in all the time. You don't want to have balance and have a little bit of this, a little bit of that, and you're never happy. You're just struggling all day yeah. versus like done, done, you know? So what's being selfish? Um, I think being selfish would just be only focusing on yourself. For yourself, for your own reasons, not yeah. for the fact that this could be a blessing to my kid one day. Just thinking like, I need to do this for me and only me and F everything else. If I lose it, lose it. No, like that's yeah. crazy. <laughs> you have to have a why and your why needs to be for the most important things in your life. That's a TikTok version <laughs> right there. Hell yeah. There's a lot that happens in life. Yes. Right now, how you said there's seasons. Seasons, and I feel, tell me if I'm wrong, Dylan, Jose, Ashley, Ike, Brittany. I feel like the last three weeks has been fucking a lot. Two or three weeks, right? And, and it's crazy and it's funny because when you start talking to your friend group, right? These are my friend groups, obviously my girlfriend, uh, my world basically because she holds it down when I'm not there. But the last couple of weeks, without even trying without even really conversating we all came to the conclusion like bro it's been a lot it's been tough he's gone through it and it's random crazy because ashley is a really good friend and she's here thank you ashley for being here mm -hmm. but she texted me and then we we're just communicating i was like she's like how are you and i was like i had a dream i felt like you were doing good you said you were doing good but in reality you weren't fuck how do you know because there's a lot of shit that we have to endure yeah. you have a business which is your personal training so how did you transfer how did you start your personal training when did you start personal training and what has kept you going in personal training um so i had a career for 10 years solid that i just never thought i was even gonna leave oh. like i was set on just being a merchandiser that's what i did for 10 years it was easy my schedule was six to three um it was just something that, like, was comfortable. Like, it was, yeah. I could do it with my eyes closed. You know what I mean? And that's why I liked it, because it was easy. It was comfortable. I knew my schedule every day. Um, and like I said, in the back of, like, my mind, it was mostly bodybuilding that, like, I'm so passionate for. Yeah. So it was, like, how do I do that? How do I have time to – that's, like, a lifestyle, actually, you know? So – it's a lifestyle as far as money too, finances. So I was just like, can I take this big, big chunk of my check just for myself? Like, that's so selfish, right? <laughs> and so I was like, no, I, I have to do something about it if I really want to do it. You know, I can't take it out of my family's paycheck. Like, that's selfish, right? So then I reached out to Self Made and I was like, whatever money I make there is going to go towards my coach. Like, I don't care how expensive my coach is. Like, I love this. Like, I cry. I get emotional watching people, like, go through it, their whole journey. And so yeah. um, I just did both jobs. And what's crazy, I didn't even tell you. Well, I'm a single mom. So actually, let me take that back. Because I don't like to say I'm single because his dad is in his life. So I would say, like, I'm a mom. But but are you taking or single? I'm not taking. <laughs> taking my happy ass to make a D's, bitch. <laughs> 
<laughs> no. Sorry, but. Jose. I, I eat healthy food salads all day long. Don't, don't worry about it. Um, no. So, like, what actually drove me to that was uh, for the longest, I had full custody all the time. His dad would visit, and I was fine with that. Um, his dad decided that he actually wants days, like, let me take him for the day. Let me sp- have him spend the night, you know. And that was just, like, so new to me because this just happened – when I started self-made, which was like a year and a half ago. So just pretty recently, my son's seven. So I'm like six years, my baby, you want to take him for the night? Like I've never gone to sleep without him. And that was me being selfish. Like, no, you can't have him. He's mine. Like I need someone to sleep with. I can't be alone. Like I haven't been alone for six years, you know? And when I had him, I was even like, God sent me someone. I'm never going to be alone. So when he was like, let me just take him, I was like freaking out. Like I got to share him? I couldn't believe it. (laughs) (laughs) Um, But... It was crazy because at the time I was thinking so immature and I say it because I was just thinking about myself. I wasn't thinking about him. I wasn't thinking about his dad. I was just like, what am I going to do? I'm going to cry at home all the time. All the time that he's not with me, I'm just going to cry. I'm not going to be able to sleep. And so, yeah, I couldn't sleep. The first three days, I could not sleep. I would stay up until I was just somehow knocked out. And... um, the third night, I was literally at, like, 1 a.m. You couldn't even ask, like, self-made what time I sent the email. It was, like, 1 a.m. And I was just, like, the worst they can say is no, you know? And I'm, like, I need something to do with my time so that I'm not crying and I'm not worried about my son when I don't Damn. have him, you know? So that's why I did it. I emailed self-made, like, hey, I have this time and I'm into training and blah, blah, blah. I gave them everything, um, like, a cover letter. And then... <laughs> After that, they called me right away, and I could, i mean, it was crazy because I went in the next day, I got my key, whatever. Um, so I was doing both jobs, but only both jobs on the days I didn't have my son. So, like, um, it was every other day or something like, something close to that. And so when I don't have my son even now, I'm there. I'm there, and I'm focusing on myself. So that's what I mean by, like... Um, It's not selfish because I'm not doing it on his time. I'm not like, well, I have my son today, but I have to go train. No, like my son's time is still his time. And then whenever I'm not with my son is when I'm doing this or when I'm doing other things. Is there a thing that your son having, being a mom, like it changed you in a certain way? Oh, 100%. Like, so who, so who, (laughs) who were you before being a mom? Okay. So my son changed me 100%. Like that's. Um, I don't want to say that's the reason why I'm not with my son's dad, but um, I've known my son's dad since we were 14. I'm 30 now, so like 15 years, and we were on and off. Um, So what he knew before we had a son was just me trying to be a people pleaser, trying to like be what he wants me to be. Um, I was very quiet. Um, I didn't really talk. I just agreed. Um, I played the part as far as like dressing up whatever I thought he was was gonna like you know I was obsessed with him and so as soon as I had my son I had a voice and that's where it was just like who is she like I don't know her and it did cause a lot of problems and um I'm thankful for it because it it's me like this is actually me I had him and I knew I wanted to care for him and really be me with him and so I I pretty much showed who I was like my true colors which was (laughs) just trying to protect my baby (laughs) come on dog come on (laughs) you're gonna have one point we're gonna do this for having a fucking voice a lot of people are fucking scared to have a voice and the question is to a lot of those people that are listening in right now whether it's on Apple Spotify if you're watching on YouTube like why are you so scared why are people scared to speak their mind don't get me wrong. Like, whatever you say, yeah. it may not please everybody. Right? Yeah. It might be, like, some people, are, ah, well, fuck, bro. Like, what the fuck are you thinking? Yeah. But to some, be like, nah, bro, you're, you're right. And we, we, us three that were here before, we talked about it. And I, I thought about this yesterday. It was like, I stopped giving a fuck about what people think when they don't give a fuck about how I feel. If you give a fuck about how I feel, I'm going to give a fuck about how you feel. But if you really don't, if you're only using me for whatever the whatever your purpose is, then I don't need to please you whatsoever. Yeah. It's a tough thing because being parents of two, I have my son. When I had my son, it was different, right? I felt like I was different. I'm like, okay, cool. I got to do this, this, this. And we moved out. We did everything. But then we had our little girl. My little girl, I don't post her that much. My little girl, yeah, my, my little girl, I'm just like, I don't need her. And I think <laughs> it was funny. 
funny now. I know it's funny now. You're going to be like, what the fuck? <laughs> but I was, <laughs> she was, she's a baby. She's only a couple months. I was like, fuck, I hope you don't find a guy like me. <laughs> I was like, I hope you don't find a guy like me. But that's just me being a dad. That's just me, like, I'm going to protect you. You're going to be a nun. You're gonna not going to, but when I talked about my son, I'm like, nah, my son's going to go everything. <laughs> my, gun, my son's going to get it, the car, the house, whatever he wants, he's going to have it. But my little girl, sacred. When she goes on her first date, I'm going to be there. <laughs> but that's just having that balance. You, that you have your son, how does that, where do you balance it as a mom? How do you teach him how to be? I think like, the same way that you think. I think, like, because he's a boy, um, and I'm a girl and I go through it is that I want him to be a gentleman. I want him to be everything that, you know, isn't out there. <laughs> I'm like, you need to be perfect because none of us. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but it's just, it's just funny because we think that way. But um, you know what's out there. That's why you're being like that with your girl. And I know what's out there. And that's why yeah. I don't want my boy to be like that, you know? So it's uh, just um, showing them what. I mean, honestly, he's so sweet. It's just hard to even be, like, uh, scared about him going out. I'm not scared. He's so nice to me that I feel like. When you discipline him, how do you discipline? You know what? <laughs> I'm not even trying to brag, but he's an angel. <laughs> like, I just have to, like, have a stern voice and just say, like, his name, like, Cameron. And that's it. And yeah. he just knows. It's, he's never been a problem he's never thrown a tantrum he never asked me for anything when we leave the store he's literally an angel <laughs> i'm obsessed <laughs> ah, okay so okay i might have it easy but i'm super blessed <laughs> uh, so what do you what is that quote what is that that a phrase that you remind yourself when you feel like life is just too much and you got to remember the balance when life is too much and you have to remember the balance what do you tell yourself i pray I pray for whatever in that moment that I need. If like before I got here, as I was honestly, let me be honest. When I was walk? walking here, I was praying and I was just like, you know what? Give me confidence. Give me uh, strength and wisdom. And may I speak to them through you. So that's how I pretty much live every day. <laughs> Damn. That's got to. We're going to. We're going to. <laughs> because energy is like how we said yesterday. Energy is key. Yeah. Depending on the room that you walk in, like you really have to see where you walk in. Are you celebrated or are you just tolerated? Yeah. Did you have to realize that at one point in your life? Um. Sometimes, yeah. You kind of think like, are these people really my friends? Is that what you mean? Like the circle, or it like could be friends. It, it's crazy because family it, it could be right? friends and it can be family. <laughs> but that's well, the main thing. Well, one of the main things yeah. because people are like, nah, bro, but that's my, that's my family. Like, well, I'm like. Doesn't matter. Yeah. They can be just as toxic as, as if there were nobodies. Yeah. Because when you're doing something positive for yourself and you're starting to smile a lot more, people are like, What the fuck? Why are you smiling? And they're just like, Well, you this is this and they judge you and it's like, yo, are, how am I gonna handle the judgment? And it goes back to like, Do I give a fuck? Uh, maybe I do, but in reality <laughs> I really don't because it's just I'm removing myself from that space to this space. The people that are here, they know exactly how we handle it, how I handle it, because individually we all had to do this. Yeah. Without even knowing, without even trying, like individually we all had to do it at one point. Brittany, she's been my rock for five, god damn, <laughs> five years. For five years. And the transitions that we both went through, and it's like, it's just that. And I do feel being a dad, being a mom, there's a difference. I handle it a different way. She handles it a different way. But as a person, I'm like, yo, you can't fill everybody's cup. Yeah. You gotta, you gotta know when to stop. You gotta know when to take care of yourself first and put yourself first. Because why? If you put other people first for the longest, you're gonna lose yourself. Yeah. When you lose yourself, your I fucking agree. world is fucking on fire. That's true. And you wake up, you're just like, fuck. You're just never gonna be happy. You're never gonna be happy. So what is happiness to you? Um, happiness to me is just waking up every day. <laughs> I'm so basic. <laughs> no, honestly, I just love to wake up and just I have a routine and yeah. the little things is happy happiness to me. I don't need a lot to be happy. Um, I feel like I never needed a lot to be happy. So now it's like extra is just extra. And I don't even see it. I don't even yeah. like 
go through it as in like, oh my God, I have extra. Let me get more. I don't, I, I don't need more. Like whatever yeah. I have is basic and that's all pretty much I ever need. So, so what <laughs> you're training now. Yes. You've been in, in bikini comp for how, for how long? Um, so I have been training for, uh, bodybuilding for bikini class for like, I want to say it's been two years only because before I actually did my show, I was training to bulk with my same coach. So I've had my same coach for two years. Okay. Um, and it's, I think like the journey alone has given me what I want. It is the daily routine is like knowing what I'm going to. Is there a confidence boost that happens when you're in bikini comp? Oh Yeah. So, like, um, it's just, like, once you get to the finish line of anything, I think, like, when you have a goal and you get all the way to the end, it you do it and you finish it and you're proud of yourself. And that gives you more power to be, like, I could do this and better. So, what know? about what about posting? Posting? Because when you're posting your progress, oh, yes. people can just talk the way they yeah, talk. Yeah. So, like, yeah, it's, we it's know. weird. It's weird because, like, I hate that people use Instagram for dating. Like, that's just so dumb. Like, get on a dating app, and that's it. Like, the people on there, is that's what they want. They want all those compliments. Go on ChristianMingle.com. <laughs> <laughs> but Instagram, for me, is just business. If I didn't have the – honestly, actually, I didn't have an Instagram – before like just posting fitness stuff so like if I didn't have my business I wouldn't even have an Instagram probably because I'm just like whatever about it but I only use it for uh business and now to like um find friends who are also into bodybuilding um so when it comes to like me posting it a girl commenting on my like physique gives me like freaking brownie points versus like a guy who says some dumb shit I'm like damn baby (laughs) <laughs> no like it doesn't even do anything blocked. <laughs> yeah pretty much i have a long block list <laughs> <laughs> that was a blocked on my list <laughs> but was there was it tough for you to start posting that type of like your progress and stuff i don't think so i don't think it's hard when you're proud of it Ooh. like if you're proud of something post it whether it's bodybuilding whether it's like i made a fresh meal for once you know what i mean or like um, I don't know. I did my gr- my daughter's hair. You know, what I mean, just post whatever literally that you're proud of. There's people out there who are going to congratulate you because they've been through that. You know what I mean? So they can relate and they can admire that you're proud of it. So what's the toughest journey about training? Like being a trainer, being a not trainer. not doing yeah. your own training for for bikini comp, but being a personal trainer. Um, I would say like not everyone is it's not like a one coach fits all, you know what I mean? So, like, sometimes when I bring someone into my team, it's like, am I right for them? Are they, like, if they're struggling, especially, like, am I doing what I can to help? Or is there someone better? Or can I do better? Or, you know what I mean? But um, Do you feel like you're a personal therapist also? All the time. It's, like, so dumb, though, because we be giving advice that is for us (laughs) to them, you know what I mean? Especially about life. It's, like, they, it's kind of like when you're getting your hair done and you start telling all your problems. That's how it is when it's like that, that like rest period, that one minute. Your and they're just like, oh, more. by the way, I did this and that. And it's just like, um, I mean, just not judging them and giving them advice and then also realizing where that advice comes from. That always hits home for me because it's like I'm not someone who's in a relationship and I haven't been in a relationship for a long time. And um, so I can't give – I believe that if you're not in a relationship, you should not be giving relationship advice. Like, it's not your place. You're clearly not in a relationship. So I give single people advice. So to any girl that, like, comes to me with her boy problems, I'm like, listen, queen, first of all, drop him. <laughs> But um, that's pretty much all right, So I what's know. your advice for a sing- for someone single? So just depending. So, like, if the girl's, like, going on about, like, this guy, it's not, like... Taking it serious. Taking it serious. Blah, blah. I'm like, girl, take yourself serious. Like, he's not taking you serious. You do it for yourself. So that's just me, like, <laughs> hyping them up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but that... I think that's what I just said and what you just said, too, like... You're giving advice to other people, and I feel like for us, it's so easy for us to give advice to other people, but for us to take it, yeah. no, mom, it's just a little hard. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm, like. But do you ever think about the advice you're giving? Like, you give <sighs> someone advice, you're like, where is that? That came from somewhere. Like, yeah. especially if it's really good advice, you have to think about it and be like, damn, did 
like do i need to put that into my life somewhere you know what i mean like yeah because like one of the videos that that we posted on tiktok that went crazy was um when a guy walks alone right like being alone is tough and then someone said like when a girl walks alone like what does that say and i'm just like damn thinking about it and it's like when a girl walks alone that just means all respect she's a bad bitch <laughs> like you can't fuck with her like she's been through a lot but she's good to walk alone in whatever case is whether it's at the store at the gym she's working on herself because she's battling her own demons and no one knows what it really is until they really ask because yeah. it goes from and we said earlier with amanda like it goes from hey what are you doing to hey how are you and it's like, oh, well, let me just tell you. Let me explain exactly how this <laughs> is. Because battling with demons, it, it takes a lot. It takes a toll. Yeah. What people see on social media is one thing. What people don't see, it's a whole nother life. Yeah. So for you, what, what, do, what do you post and what do you, what your own following doesn't know about you? Yeah. Um, like, are you very, like transparent like when you're going through something like, no so like i'm not transparent till i i finish going through it because then i have advice to give but i don't want to be on the internet just venting and not having a solution yeah like that's what i so when i'm going through something i go through it fully on on my own or with friends in real life um so i don't post it until i actually go through it and i have something to give and yeah. i'm not just there crying and venting about so you're it. not there just to complain Exactly. You don't like complaining? I don't like complaining <laughs> ever. <laughs> like, I can't. Like, if you every time you ask me how I am, I'm going to say good. I'm like that. Is that a bad <laughs> thing? No, nah, I think that's all of us. <laughs> how are you? I'm good. I'm good. I'm chilling. Yeah. And then, not nah, for real, how I really are you? Oh, well, let me tell you the truth. Yeah. And I think that just happens. But, I mean, just life. Life is going to have its ups and downs. It's going to ha- it's gonna go in a circle. It's going to go around and around. But... That shit still keeps going. The clock keeps ticking. Yeah. Until you take it serious and you take accountability of, like, what's really happening, your time valuable, you're just like, oh, well, fuck. I need to, I need to start now. The clock is ticking. Yeah. If you don't start now, then it doesn't stop. It doesn't stop. So you, you, your exact age, what is it right now? I'm 29. My birthday's in August. <laughs> I'll be 30 this year. What's the... You think it's ever too late to start a career? No, I don't think so. I don't think it's too late to do anything. I actually heard something that said your age is your energy. So, like, the energy you bring is more important than, like, your age. So you don't go up to someone like, hi, I'm Cynthia right now when I introduce yourself or introduce myself. Like, I'm Cynthia, I'm 30. Like, you don't do that. You know what I mean? (laughs) No, that's, that's, I never thought about it that way. So your huh? age is your energy. Age is your energy. Yeah. My name is Luis. I'm 21. <laughs> <laughs> Why <are> you laughing? <laughs> <laughs> now I'm 26. 26. That's good she energy. didn't tell you, but someone's older than me. There you go. <laughs> Let me see. It, <laughs> yeah. After yeah. 27, you don't even know how you 20, forget. <laughs> My homeboy Andrew for sending us this little care package to a Toys to Life. You know the squad is gonna get some good stuff from Pure Games. Hey. Let's go. Let's open Make, it up. Let's see what we have. Make sure y'all follow them on Instagram. Let's go. <laughs> Damn, any, any, yeah. okay. <laughs> He's like, I need to get it. My guy. Give me the galoesto. Give me. Coming oh, up with the hey, fire, shoot. different colorways. All right, let's start off with the purple. Right, right. Check this out. Material girl on Wednesday, we wear what? We wear pink, yes. but it's purple. <laughs> All right, let's go. Ooh, oh, we got the red one. Can you hold this one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Got the, the red one goes fire. The red one goes fire. This is a little classic. Some beer gains, you already know, yeah. baby. Let's go. Yeah. Dylan just modelando. It's all good. <laughs> all right, uh, we got the same purple one here. Oh, white. Okay. White and black. You can never go wrong with white and black, dude. Deep. Ooh, this one's big. This one's for the big guy. Yeah, there you go. Behind the camera right there. Appreciate you, Andrew. Material you girl. already know. Hey, my boy takes care of us, dog. You already know. Appreciate it. Look at that. Pure games. Good quality stuff. Look at it. My guy, you can feel that quality there, man. Appreciate no. it, my guy. Thank you. We're about to rock this right now. Tonight. Back on, right? Don't worry about it. Sorry, guys. I'm going to... I. I'm turning it on because the progress pictures that I sent my coach, they're not pictures. They're videos of my lifts. 
Did I not hit 405 without you there? Did I not hit six plates deadlift without you there? Okay. Jose, I appreciate you, but guys, I eat nothing but salads and wobble grill and chicken and rice all day. <laughs> look at the physique. Look at this. We're still good. Oh, shit. But we're good. But we're good. How do you, what's one thing you tell your clients when they first start with you? Let's see. To, well, I just ask if they're ready to invest in themselves and like what, what is their why? So like the same, what is your why? Why are you doing this? My coach never asked me. What is your why? My coach never asked me my why. That is the most important thing. And you know, it's good for me to know your why so that I know how to push you yeah. mentally and for you to remember like, why am I doing this? It, is it a good idea to have your friends as a client? <laughs> yes, because you're supporting your friend's business. But only if you follow his plan for you. Okay, I'm going to say on here, sorry, Jose. <laughs> <laughs> I really don't follow your plan. I talk a lot of shit. But I think my thing, and I told Jose, I was like, fool, I haven't been coached since high school. Yeah. Like, no matter what happened, even when I got to the gym with her, you know I mean? anybody, I don't, I don't love being told what to do. Give him the opposite plan, and he'll do what you need him to do. <laughs> Practically, but I mean, we hit four or five. We hit six places the first time ever in my life. We squatted pretty good, but right now we're on a, I don't know. I think life just hit, and we're, just, we're on different pages right now. But we're going to go back. We're going to go back for sure. <laughs> but for you, what's the, what's one thing that ha has happened to you that you look back and you're just like, damn, I really went through that? So many things, so many things. I feel like, okay, my I got you. I got you. <laughs> Where do I start? Wherever you want to make you cry. <laughs> you said, no, I'm going to make you cry. I am. Okay, so I was never someone who believes in, like, have you ever had, like, someone tell you, like, everything stems from your childhood? And do you hate that? Do you roll your eyes back? Like, yeah, yeah, whatever. Childhood trauma. I fucking did that shit all the time. And I know it's a thing, but, like, I was just like, yeah, yeah, sure. Like, I'm good. And, no, until I had an actual conversation with someone, um, she all she did was compliment me. She just said, oh, like, you look great, whatever. And I'm like, oh, my God, thank you, you know. And then um, I started telling her about my coach. Like, oh, my coach never compliments me, you know. And that was the thing that came out of my mouth. So she's Mine like, either. oh. <laughs> No, and she's like, well, are you looking for validation? Ooh. And I was like, you're right, I am. And when she doesn't give it to me, what do I do? I fall off. I'll, I'll go eat in and out. Like, I do this amazing check-in, and I'm like, she didn't say anything. You know what? I'm going to go eat in and out. Fuck that. Yeah. And I thought about it, and I was like, how is that even going to make me better? Like, yeah. she doesn't care. You know what I mean? Why am I not caring about myself? So she started to tell me, like, who, you, who were you seeking validation from before, you know? And instantly, it's like the last relationship I was in, I just think. So my son's dad, I'm like, the same thing. Validation. I was seeking for validation. I was trying to be who he wanted me to be. And if he didn't compliment me, I would either try harder or just be like, screw it, whatever. I can't be who you want me to be. And she's like, no, it goes deeper. And I'm like, girl. And I'm thinking, and I'm like, I had a stepmom. And literally, she, uh, she... I mean, okay, so I actually grew up with my dad, not my mom. So, like, my dad raised me. And so when he, I had a stepmom, I was just like, no. Like, I need, like, my dad is mine, no. But then she had daughters my age, and I loved playing with them. So at some point, I actually wanted her to like me. So, like, I craved yeah. for it. Like, I need her to say something to me, you know, and she never did. Like, it was always her daughter's, you know, her daughter's smart, her daughter's pretty. And for me, when she would introduce to introduce someone to us like me and my brother was just like oh they're his kids you know and I think that's where it came from like the validation and then it was even worse then she's like no it's it's more and so I'm like girl I grew up with my dad I love my dad I praise my dad till this day like I'm so happy he raised me but I think when you think of people in your life for me at least for someone who like I look at the glass full not empty all the time and so when I think about my dad I do praise him because he raised me and yeah. I'm thankful that he you know what I mean he showed up as a dad and stuff like that but um like he was human you know what I mean so like his um the way he disciplined us was a little uh 
I want to say, like, he was very vocal. Like, he cussed, called us names. You know what I mean? Like, really bad names where you start to believe it. <laughs> like, if he calls you a dumbass, if he calls you this, that, you know what I mean? You start to believe it as you grow up because it doesn't stop there. Someone else calls you a dumbass, and you're like, fuck, my dad called me a dumbass. She called me a dumbass. That kid called me. I might be a dumbass, you know? <laughs> and it's funny, but it's sad because yeah. you believe it. You believe it because it's something that you keep hearing. And it's like, where did it stem from? Someone you loved. And that's why you you believed it. Yeah. And for me, I always, because I always praised my dad, I didn't even think like. It came from there. It came from that. I thought like my dad was like, you know what I mean? That's crazy. But like, it is crazy because I'm glad that I went through that conversation with her because for the longest, I blamed the people I didn't love for it. So the people who called me dumbass that I didn't love, I blamed them for that feeling versus someone who I love that was my dad who started it. Who made me, if my dad would have told me I'm the smartest kid alive and some kid told me I'm dumb, I'm like, boy, bye. My dad said I'm smart. But because my dad said I was a dumbass, yeah. I believed it for the for the for my whole life. So do you think when growing up and coming from Hispanic parents, well, where's your dad from? So my dad's from Aguas Calientes. So yeah, he's from Mexico. Okay, okay. <laughs> Aguas Calientes. Yeah, so like just because I grew up that way too. And again, how you said, yeah. when you grow up and you make a dumb mistake, oh, the but, littlest mistakes. Yeah, but my thing now, especially that my son, and I don't, I think we've had a conversation before, and it's more like, all right, now looking back at how our parents raised us, even though they don't, like, we have our kids, and they could be hard on us when we grew up, yeah. but now with them, Oh, don't touch him. No, do this. No, we got him. I'm just like, what the fuck? Like, why were you hard ass with me? But we're talking, I was talking with Dylan's dad. I was like, I feel like our parents were hard on us to build us. Yeah. So they built us so we can withstand what life is, what they're going through. Yeah. And now with our with our kids, they're just like, nah, 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 nah. Yeah, you don't need to do that. Because they're babies. Our, I'm learning this. Our parents grew us to what they grew into. Like, it just keeps fucking going. My dad went through hardship, and he wanted me to grow through it because he wanted me to know how he felt. He wanted me to know that life is not easy, sweetie. You know what I mean? (laughs) And so it's like it was tough love, and I don't think people realize that tough love hurts like it 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 had it has to be a boundary there has to be a limit like there's no fucking way i'm ever gonna call my son dumb like no way no way because i want him to know i tell him all the time you're smart you make smart decisions you're brave i tell him i don't tell him anything negative if he has to work on something i'm like let's work on it but like because i know that like the struggle and pain that i feel whenever i'm down it's because of how I felt of, yeah. like, things being told to me. So, Thanks. like, now when it comes to my kid, like, I don't want him to feel that struggle. And I want him to be confident enough. Like, yes, he's going to go through his own journey mistakes in life and, and mistakes. Yeah. But I want him to be confident in them. I wasn't confident in everything that I went through. I was agreeing with it. I deserve this. I deserve that. I deserve a shit boyfriend. I deserve a shit life because I'm dumb. You know what I mean? Versus, like, if my parents instilled in me that I, I could do whatever I want and I can be the best, through every every bad thing in life, because it's going to happen, I would still be like, I could do this, I could do this, I could do this. Like, you know what yeah. I mean? So do you agree with making yourself happy instead of others? Um, I think you have to be happy to make others happy. You just have to. Even you if other people... Like, so, all right, so I'm going to be controversial. Yes. You, you said you got to be happy for others to be happy, but sometimes your happiness affects others and doesn't make them happy. And they may, like, throw, like, why are you doing this? Like, training, right? Personal training for a lot of people is not a real job. Yeah. Why are you going to do personal training? Why are you going to even take a chance on that? Pal gimnasio? Pa que? Yeah. Right? Like, like your family, right? Like, right? Yeah, like, literally, like, yesterday, I love my dad. My dad's going to come to <laughs> L.A. at one point. But I told him, like, yo, like, we finally got monetized, whatever. He's like, I'm like, bro, like, I'm trying to build my stuff. So you built your shit. And I tell everybody, <laughs> my dad built his. That's his. I work for him. Yeah. I'm trying to build mine. So something like I can have it. Yeah. And yesterday when he said that, I kind of just like, I just, yeah, I'm yeah. like, I get paid. Don't worry about it. We don't really get paid. Like, we're just starting. Yeah. As reality, like, for anybody to get six figures, to get this amount of money, like, yo, you got to start somewhere. Yeah. For personal training, you might just start at two clients. Mm-hmm. You might start at two clients that are your own friends. Yes. 
But until you get to people that don't know you but want to invest mm -hmm. in with you because they believe in what you're doing, that's the goal. Now that we're on TikTok and everywhere, like, people tap in. Like, we go to Texas and we get love. I love that. Someone told <laughs> us, someone told me yesterday, like, come to come to Chicago. I'm like, we're, we're, we're ready. Angela, she's like, Yo, let's go to Washington. Let's do this. And it's like, next week we tap into San Diego. We tap in with somebody else. Like, bro, like, we're really going, like, we went, we went on live this week with, with Jose. Someone <laughs> from San Diego tapped in. And it's just, it's crazy to see because I don't think we've ever taken a step back and really realized what's really happening, how we're doing things. But when we get other feedback and someone random is telling us, we're just like, oh, shit. Okay. And then I text all day and I'm just like, yo, like, look what happened. Don't know. Yeah. They see it. So for you, have you taken that step back? And realize everything you're doing, how you're changing people's lives with personal training? Yeah. I think that's important to do. I think passionate people care about that moment where you're taking that step back and really realizing what you're doing it is you have to be passionate about it for it to even go far and for you to for it to even go far is because people feel the same passion you're feeling if you don't have the passion they're not going to feel it and it's not going to go anywhere it's not going to go as far as you think it is just because you want it to i think yeah. people have to feel something they have to feel a relationship a bond like hear you out they have to feel something yeah. to connect and and want more for you and if they don't then that's i feel like that's why it doesn't last Without love, shit don't last. <laughs> exactly. Right? That we just finished a talk with, with Amanda right outside, and, like, love can only get you so far. Right? So for you, relationships. Love can only get you so far. Yeah, I think love can only get you so far. Like, there has to be so. more. <laughs> there ha like, there has, like, I feel like there just has to be more. She, Brittany's here, the one that we went through identity fucking crisis, just trying to figure our shit out together. And apart. Like, our biggest thing was find ourselves together, but we also had to find ourselves apart from us. Yeah. Because when we're not with each other, who are we? Yeah. Like, in high school, oh, well, my boyfriend is over there. My girlfriend is over there. Oh, <laughs> why well, I love them. Home. Oh, why well, I love them. <laughs> uh, lunch, brunch, I'm with them all 24-7. Weekends, I'm with them 24-7. But when they break up, who are you? Yeah. Oh, man, I want, what's the, what's the famous quote that we all did in high school? I'm gonna kill myself. <laughs> I can't be with. I can't be without oh, you. No. Shit, people like fools go through that, yeah. and we like we didn't go through that. Trust me, we didn't go through that. <laughs> but our thing is like, hey, like, what are you doing that you're happy with? And cool, whatever it is, I'm happy. That's cool. Find yourself. Whatever I'm doing, I'm happy. Yeah. But I can't be happy for the okay, both of us. Yeah. Definitely. So for you now. You've been, you have your son, you have your business, you went through life. What is a relationship qualification for you personally? Like, number one, well, because I'm a big believer in God, I'm always like, you have to be God-driven as well, like your goals in your life. Like, God is number one, you know what I mean? And then after that, it's like, what are you passionate about? Is passion, like, yeah. do you have something you're passionate It doesn't have to be my passion. You don't have to like what I like. Just do you have something that you like and that you want to work towards? Um, those are my top two. So it, if they're not in the same ministry as you, it's okay? If they're not in the same, like, the same religion? No, not, not religion, like, industry. Oh, no, yeah, that's fine. I know everyone always gives me that face. No, no, like, no, no, I'm just have asking. To work out? I'm like, no. I Not be, for so. some girls. For some girls, it does. For some girls, yeah, it does. I don't, honestly. Some girls and guys. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna be biased. Some girls and guys. Yeah. If if your fitness, they just so, like they fall into someone that's in fitness too. I think health is important more than what your body looks like. So like I guess, just taking care of yourself. It doesn't have to be like where you have to be bodybuilding or like you know pumping yeah. iron like no i just need but to do you think there's an understanding healthy heart. there's an um, understanding like hey you gotta be doing when you go into your bikini comps like you said that's your time yeah. that is like you yeah. you become selfish uh, yeah. do they have to, like if they don't understand you doing all that like yo like you need to spend time with me or with us like I why are you well, why are you moody i'm saying it's like he has to have a passion i have my own passion mine's is body being hitches whatever so if he has his own passion, he knows what it feels what it like takes. when it when you need to yeah. you know take time to master it pretty yeah. much. Um, so I don't think it has to be bodybuilding. Um, it just has to be like you have to be solid and you have to have a passion. You have to love 
your own alone time too you know what i mean like i don't know i don't i like i say i can't give relationship advice because i'm not in one so i don't know um i just know what i'm learning through being single is you always have to put yourself first to be happy to serve people you need to be happy because if i'm miserable i'm gonna i'm gonna throw that energy to you yeah. and it's not going to be a happy situation. So I feel like if I have good energy, I'm happy, I'm doing what I love the most, and then I go to you, I'm all in, baby. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> baby, I got you. <laughs> but that is ex how we just said earlier off the camera. People are just scared to really speak their own mind. Yes. They're scared of what other people are going to say, what other people are going to think. And I heard it earlier, like yesterday and today in the morning, that – People are so scared to really talk their own mind because sometimes the people in their own friend group and their own circle don't want them to grow bigger, yeah. don't want them to expand, don't want them to take a chance on themselves because why? They don't want growth. And in reality, in life, in this life that we're living right now, in order for you to grow, like, you got to take opportunities. You got to get out of your comfort zone. You got to, if you have a dream, go and get it right now. Why? Because time is passing by, and if you don't take advantage right now, it's it, you're gonna you're gonna be unfortunately like some people that are in you're gonna older yeah. they're gonna they're living in regret that high school athlete oh I could have been pro but <laughs> you know I blew out my knee I'm never got back bro shut the fuck up like yeah. <laughs> you were never gonna do that like in order for you to like I've met people that have been pros that have been semi pros and they're really just about their fucking business like people that get injured tore an ACL or ankle. Whatever it is, they went to rehab. Boom. Yes. I'm back to it, bro. I had to do what I had to do in order to get to my next step. Because you wanted it that bad. Yeah. I just had a conversation with someone the other day, and it was, like, struggling about just, like, the fitness trainer lifestyle. And it was just, like, venting, complaining with no solution. So I'm hearing you out. I'll hear anyone out for yeah. five minutes, and I'll do my best to be compassionate and give you advice that I, ne that I needed before and I learned. And I give it to you, and you're just like, no, no, no. But, like, I already did that. I already did that for, like, another three minutes, you know? And it's like, all right, girl, listen, you can either be someone who's broken and lose this, too, or be broken and say you want this. You know what I mean? You have two choices all the time. People go yeah. through shit all the time. You're not the only one, you know what I mean? Like you just said, there's people who you meet who are like, oh, I, uh, I hurt myself, so I could have been that, but I'm not. And there's people who say, I hurt myself, and I still did it. You know what I mean? <laughs> and I think that's... Yeah. Those are the people yeah. <laughs> that we want to be versus someone who just cries about it. You know what I mean? No shots to anybody that I just met at, at the gym. <laughs> but there, I was talking to this dude, and he was just like, oh, yeah, man. Like, you know, I play soccer on the weekends. You know, me and my, my friends, we play soccer when we were young. But, you know, I blew on my knee. And, uh, you know, soccer becomes a little tough. I'm like, yeah, bro, like, we get older. Like, it's tough to recover. Yeah, but when I do leg day, my knee's Perfect. So <laughs> I'll go play soccer and I'm out for three days and then I do leg day and I'm good. But I go back to soccer and I'm out again. I'm just like, I'm like, it just depends on how you take care of yourself. You know, we, we all know how to take care of ourselves, like drinking a lot of caffeine, not eating healthy, not exercising, not whatever it is. Like there's going to be an effect. There's an action. There's an effect. Mm -hmm. There's an action. There's a consequence. Yeah. It's just how I tell everybody. If you're going to make that action, make sure you're good with the consequence of what is bound to happen. Yeah. So in everybody here, like if you're going to, if again, anybody listen to, I, I know everybody either has gone through it or like if you make the decision to cheat on your significant other, there's a consequence. If you make the decision not to go to the gym, you know the consequence. <laughs> you make the decision to stop working, you know the consequence. But if you're good with the fucking consequence that's bound to happen of the result, fuck it. Then good. Do do whatever is best for you. But you cannot blame anybody else. Why? Because we're all old enough to know our consequences. We're not little kids in high school or junior high or elementary that we can get our parents to bail us out anymore. Like it's us. Yeah. Like if we get caught dry like out in the street doing something, we're gonna go to jail. Yeah. Like it's like we can call our parents, hey, bail me out. I know my kid did that <laughs> full sleep there. I'll pick you up tomorrow. <laughs> Learn that shit. Learn. Why? Because... What about your daughter? No, I'm just kidding. I got you right now. I'm paying them right now. You Don't worry about it. There. I'm not letting you hear me there. <laughs> I hope to trust both of my kids the same exact way. 
But how she, we both talked about it. Like, we we're just so blessed that we had our son first. So I'm sending my son with her anywhere she goes. She wants to go on a first date. No way you're there. You want to go to movies? He's there. I won't be on the top two, but that's be. (laughs) But it's right. But it it just in reality is just mostly like again, if you're good with whatever action you're gonna make, be good with the consequence. It goes back to being like being. There's a balance. If you're gonna do this, know that this is gonna come down. But if you're going to invest your time in this, no, this shit's going to come down. But no one thinks that far ahead. No. The people who are making those mistakes are not thinking that way. Yeah, but I, I really think it it depends on where you are in life. Yeah. You have a business. Jose has a business. Dinner's is with me on this shit. Like, from the beginning here in L.A., like, they, they all have their own stuff going on that we, everybody here thinks so far ahead now. Like, all right, if I do this, yeah. damn, this is what's going to happen. Everything. Yeah, it, it, it affects your integrity in whatever you're doing. Yeah, you're like, <laughs> yeah, no, no. <laughs> you said earlier, like, hey, am I doing okay? Again, people are gonna disagree. People are gonna agree. Yeah, people are gonna listen here, and they're gonna be like, "Yo, I agree with everything you said. Thank you so much." And then some yeah, might, yeah. may not say it to your yeah, face, yeah, but they're yeah. gonna be like, "Hey, well." I didn't agree with that. Well, cool. Then what do you I agree with? That's okay. Because everybody has a voice. I think that's okay. Biggest thing about this podcast, subscribe if you haven't, yes. is have your own fucking voice. Yes. Say whatever you got to say. Be proud of however you think. Be proud of however you see things. But don't be afraid to speak your mind. Because if you're afraid, you're going to live a long life of, like, false. No a false life. You. Yeah, like, <laughs> that. that's a... Oh, man. No one's going to believe you because you're going to say one thing, you're going to go do another thing. Yeah, exactly. And that's one thing we've talked about it from the beginning. Dylan knows it. And I just said it earlier. This is called Toast Light Podcast. We love to drink. I love to drink. <laughs> I love to have a great conversation. My boy Ike here, he's like, hell yeah, me too, baby. <laughs> it, it is, I'm not going to say I don't drink because I'm very positive, very motivational, and then go and do this behind scenes. No, no, no. We do this here, and we do this here. Why? Because I started it, the way we started is we had a great conversation getting fucked up. That's funny. Yeah. I mean, because Jose, you're being truthful. Jose was there when we were at the West Covina. We got tore up. We got 3 a.m. It's called liquor courage. 3 a.m. Yeah, because I tell, yeah. Yeah, I tell everybody, I was like, remember a party with your homeboys, you're getting drunk, and then you're off to the side with your homeboy, and you're like, bro, but I'm going through this, though. You know what I'm saying? That's Become what it is. vulnerable. It's hard for people to be vulnerable because you get judged. So, like, speaking your mind, you're going to get judged. Yeah. It's just how far do you believe what you're saying and how you feel? Like, do you really believe that? And when it comes out, you'll know if you believe it by, like, how stern your voice is, how, yeah. like, how you sound saying it. And people might believe you because you are so, you know what I mean, so confident in what you're saying. But, like, I just told you off camera is that, it's okay for people not to agree with you because it's up for discussion. It's up for conversation. I'm not someone who's like, this is the way I think. This is the only way I see things. Like, I love speaking and talking to people because you probably gone through other things that I haven't gone through that can teach me a different lesson. I'm always, everyone is allowed to change their mind about their beliefs. You have to let yourself, though. You have to be open to it. Yeah, <laughs> you have to have an open mind. You have to, uh, you have to be willing to listen more than you talk. Yes. You know, you have. Uh, someone said it in one of our Q and A's that went out. Is you have two ears, one mouth. Make sure you listen more than you talk. Mm-hmm. You know, and it's true because in order for you to grow and learn, you got to be able to listen to others, people. Yeah. Like you said, everything you just talked about right now, I got to learn. I got to learn a lot. Like. You know, talking negative to like saying those little yeah, small yeah, things yeah. that have a long term effect. Right now, I'm just like, damn, fool. Like, <laughs> he's gonna go back home. I'm so sorry. <laughs> not, not even, not even my son. I call these guys over here. <laughs> I'm just like, damn, why do this? I do tell these was that, but I'm just like, okay, like there's there's room to grow, and in order for you to grow, you got to learn. You can't be stubborn. You can't be naive. You can't be just tunnel vision on one thing. It's like, yo, you got to be. You can have a tunnel vision on your dream, but in reality, you have to have your visors open. Like, you got to see what's going on around you and what's happening. So when you get to that end point, whatever it is, you're there with everything. The journey is more important than the destination. (laughs) 
<laughs> Damn. <laughs> Fuck. Serve me up, fool. We're going to end it on that one. <laughs> okay, fool. I'm, I'm waiting. He's drinking to everything. Stop lying. <laughs> Jose's had a long week. <laughs> Jose said personal training is, is there's a long week. I'm like, mic check. <laughs> He's all, I'm drinking. <laughs> Yeah, double cup it. <laughs> so I I could say that this podcast, this episode, is gonna have a lot of value for whoever listens. It can be single mothers, it can be mothers right now, it can be individuals that are figuring themselves out, they have trauma, they have whatever they're trying to figure out. Once they reaches them, they're gonna be like, "You're right." So whatever you, everything you just said right now, just know it had a lot of value. So you came in maybe nervous. You came in maybe unsure. Like, man, am I talking too much? Am I lost a little bit? She just she just went all around the block, <laughs> but she's here. But just know it had a lot of value. So everything you got to say when it when it airs and people are listening to this right now, like they're gonna message you and they're gonna be like, "Yo, thank you for saying that. It, your voice has power." And you have to understand. And you have to remember that everything you gone through and everything you're preaching. It has a lot of power and a lot of value that other people didn't have at that moment. Yeah. So your voice speaks speaks volumes. Amen. <laughs> Amen. I love it. So if you haven't subscribed, tune in for the next podcast and everything that's happening. Patreon is on, TikTok, IG, YouTube. Make sure everybody's doing all that because again, we're just fucking getting started, bro. We're too we're going too crazy for this. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You already know. I'm gonna take a toast. This is Agua, but everybody, thank you guys. Let's go.